Hello, so this game is amazing and it has a lot of layers to it. In this video we'll only talk about the new player guide and advanced player guide about the four major mechanics of the game which is cars, player progression which can be item skills or other things, then base building and then crafting because that's a huge component of the game. Now let's go to the basic. What is the best location for a base? Well, to be honest it depends on where you spawn but normally this is kind of like what I would suggest you do. You pick a urban area like this and just go into the middle of it where you are next to the wilderness. Because in the wilderness you will have a lot of minerals like saltpeter, sulfur, iron ore and a lot of rocks. So I'm just got, I'm going to go out of my base and basically farm this whole area with a pickaxe. Very important. Also you need an area in the center because you need to loot a lot of cars. Sometimes you need a lot of fuel. Fuel is one of the rarest resources in the game. You'll get a lot in the beginning, but after that it will become more and more rare. So always take fuel when you can, and then you have to scavenge for parts. But you can also find some amazing things in the buildings or some amazing things around the zombies. So yeah, one of these areas central over here, and if you're wondering what this is, this is a nest. We'll do it another time. And later you can explore other things, but first of all, Build the base, explore your surroundings, then go to a major gun shop like that. And then if you can, and if you have the time, maybe a supermarket and when you're feeling super super ready, go for the computer icon, which is the CIS computer icon, which basically is a fallout type of mechanic that will give you a fallout type of mechanic. So yeah, aiming assist and it's very, very fun. We'll, we'll use that a bit later. And what about the cars? Well, to be honest, to see what car is better, you have to look at the, the name. Luxury SUV is one of the best, if not the best, or one of the ones you'll use a lot. Engine power is the most important stat, in my opinion, because if it doesn't have engine power, it will go super slow. A van can go two times as slow as this one. Max RPM is also pretty important, you know, faster, faster speed up and, and faster... <laughs> Driving backwards, fuel capacity is also super important because when you're out and about, you don't really want to stop and refuel it. Sometimes you don't even want to get out of your car for 5 to 10 minutes. Fuel consumption is also important. So yeah, it's one of like those trade-offs, but to be honest, for the sake of keeping everything simple, I'm using the luxury SUV. This has much better fuel consumption, the engine power is not that bad, but then we get to the other part. It doesn't have a lot of space, but space is not a problem because currently in the game, again, this will be a major problem because a lot of these things will be fixed in the future, I'm sure of it. And you'll have trouble uh, maybe kind of adapting to it. Fuel consumption is so much less on this one, but the engine power makes it such a bad decision. So luxury SUV will be one of the best options, as you can see it has a lot of inventory space now. The headlights and the wheels and the battery you have to remove, find a better one and install it. So basically you scavenge the wheels off of all of the vehicles in your area and just put the best wheels, the best headlights and you will repair the main structure which can be 100 but if you repair it you can only repair it to max 80. The engine, the transmission, the fuel tank and a lot of other things as well. So replace some parts, have a spare battery, have fuel tanks with you, and then you'll be ready to go. Now, what do I have over here? We have the leather bags. I'll show you how to craft the leather bags later, but basically it's like Tarkov. They have a massive amount of inventory space, but as you can see, it's basically fitting in the trunk of the car, which means we can increase the... <laughs> uh, oh, I don't know. They should really look into these things. They can, you can increase the space of your trunk 10 times over. So what I will usually do is have more backpacks and in one there will be tools, in one there will be weapons and in the other one there will be food. But that's too much organizing for now and you can of course make your own system. Fuel canisters are also super super hard to find so when you find one definitely take it. As you can see this is 10 liters, this is 30 liters and you can also find some other ones that are smaller. The large canteen can act as fuel recipients as well so keep food. Keep two of these clean waters filled up and maybe some it, and you'll be ready to go. 
Also, I would recommend you keep one stack of wood and one stack of cloth just because you might need something else and you will see later. Now, that's the card, that's the base location. What about your character? What should you put on yourself? Well, it's going to be a long discussion, but I'll keep it very, very short. The main thing you should worry about in the beginning is get a crossbow. No matter what the type of crossbow, just get a crossbow. If it's wooden, if it's metal, doesn't matter. If you can craft on craft one, wooden arrows, but then you have to switch to metal arrows as fast as possible. And then in the skill tree you have over here arrow recovery and maybe faster draw time. Again, this is not really needed, so try to only get this one in the beginning and maybe accuracy and, and at least this one. So these two are level one and then you can maybe get this one and then you can get the rest and when you get the CIC computer definitely take all of the upgrades for it. You can recover the arrows pretty nice and one of the major mechanics of the game is durability but you can kind of bypass that because you can repair the crossbow or the airbow with tendons which makes your job a lot easier you don't have to have item repair kits which are super hard to make so we can wear one of those leather bags instead of this one because it has a lot more slots but to be honest you will go overweight if you fill up a backpack like that uh, if you fill up a leather bag like this and that means your food, the food will drain faster and that means it will get very very tedious, so I don't know, I just prefer this for the looks and besides I'm pretty sure the developer will balance all of this. Grenades or mortals, very handy to have. The CIS is better the gra than the grappling hook skill by a long shot. Flashlight, well, I recommend you have one of these flashlights and one of these flashlights and then just fill your inventory slots with batteries like this. You can also use the smaller flashlights, but to be honest, the, the view angle is so silly, you, you'll you be angry. So the illumination angle is 180, 180 degrees, which is great. This one will only be 110. It might consume the batteries faster and you might also get the same results with the torch, but eh, you need to use them. For the head, the imitation military, you, you, I mean... The replica is quite enough in the beginning, also you can get one of the nicer gas masks. The game is supposed to have a spore system, which means you will eventually find some spores. I'm not sure if that's in the game or not, but just wear it to be sure. As for your torso slot, you can put a lot of things over here. I keep the cape because apparently it works sometimes. I'm, I haven't played without it, so I cannot confirm or, or deny its utility, but I just keep it on. So I'm less visible to the zombies and sometimes they'll have a hard time finding you. Then if you can have armor that's great and then you can probably just put the Kevlar suits. For example look at this one. 10% thermal, 40% defense, speed minus 1, 6 by 2, weight 1. Also defense is my highest just because I have the armor so in the beginning you lose this as your utility slot. So at some point you'll want to replace them with much better things. Whatever you wear on you, it will not count as weight. So for example, let me show you. 22, that will be 23. Then you can go tactical. And I always carry the Redermans with me. Maybe we might need them, they can also ignite the fire, they can do a lot of things. Lock picking and ignition, so yeah. But I would try to preserve them as much as you can. As for the pants, same as the slots, except that sometimes you'll find much better ones that can give you a lot more protection. But that means they'll decrease your speed, so my speed is 87% now. Speed minus 1. Speed minus 2. And of course the shoes, I recommend you get the shoes that have 10% speed and the rest is not so important. You may wonder, well, does it work? Yes or no? Yeah, it works very well. Definitely keep your speed to a decent level. You'll get hit a lot in this game and you'll get hit, hit by a lot of things, so don't worry about that. So the crossbow and the melee weapon, well, I guess the best melee weapon is the axe, the fire axe. That's the best compromise you can get as a melee weapon. And then there is the machete, which is the easiest one to repair and has a lot of attack speed. And as for the guns, well, to be honest, I found it super, super hard to maintain and use guns. So the best option is to use a Glock, 
because you can get a lot of magazines for it and the 9mm ammo is super easy to find as opposed to the other ones but as soon as you can upgrade it to upgrade the gun to a colt the colt as you can see does a lot more damage so you basically you're using the same bullet 9mm to do 50% more damage than a glock or even more sometimes because it's going to be one of those things that you'll just have to play to see it but the best damage for the best bullet and also this is a rare weapon you can also have a combat master or something like that which is the upgraded cold but yeah good luck finding that one definitely put the laser sight on it and the suppressor on it otherwise just put whatever you want on it it's definitely one of the best weapons in the game that will help you a lot and also here always equip a dagger even if it's a if it's a bad quality it's a copper dagger it's a wooden dagger just equip one because you can execute zombies sometimes you'll be you'll hit them and then you can execute them laser is such a cool mechanic and also you'll have a lot of magazines because you find so many glocks you can just fill all of them up and reloading is super easy don't have a magazine with more clear ammo if you don't have a magazine for your current open you'll just put one bullet into it and that's the basic setup now let's go over the base setup now as for your base setup i recommend you find a building with beds and <laughs> drag in the trash cans and whatever else you can find trash cans also like these little shelves because you can see what's on them so later on you can i saw some people make a base in the gun shop so this gun shop icon just means it's a huge gun shop but there is another gun shop over here which is much smaller and you can make it in you, into your base and you can just put all of the guns on display there but again i'm not that picky you'll need a lot of things and sometimes you'll find items that you will not use normally but you'll use it because you got it over here I have all of the gun parts, you'll get a lot of gun parts and also if you disassemble the guns you can get parts for them to repair them. Over here I have the food, the canned food and the canned drinks. You have to have a stockpile of this otherwise you'll, you'll have a very hard time enjoying the game. This is, this is supposed to be the melee weapons. So the easiest one to repair are with the iron plate and as you can see the iron machete is good for that. Look at attack time and attack range, but also uh, the attack stamina cost. Attack stamina cost is 0 0.5 for the base, but anyway, that's, that doesn't matter. You can get a compound crossbow or a compound bow. They use the same type of ammo. And as you can see, they are repaired with the tendons for the crossbows, but the compound bows need a firearm repair kit, so I wouldn't really use the compound bows just because the firearm repair kits are so rare. As for the other melee weapons, they're cool and all, but sometimes you feel like you're, you feel like you're going to waste, uh, let's say, I don't know, shooting a Glock at pumpkins. You should be shooting a .22 at a pumpkin. Anyway, that doesn't matter. You get that. You get the idea. You shouldn't waste very valuable resources on very basic enemies. Otherwise, you'll have a hard time repairing and maintaining all of the things. You also can find these, but that will be the harder part of the game. Now, about the pistols. Well, you can find a lot of pistols. You can even find the wrist breaker, which is a shotgun pistol. But be very, very careful. They make a lot of noise, so noise generation is a really big problem. Because the more noise you generate, you have a chance of spawning elite enemies, and the elite enemies don't mess around. You should have all of your weapons suppressed. The Ruger .22 is also one of the better weapons to begin with. But again, it will still use... Handmade suppressor and some other things, it will still use up your... Firearm kits. So make sure you are using something that is very very good and also collect all of the guns you can because at some point you'll just use whatever you find when it no longer has any durability. Disassemble it, use another one and when it doesn't have durability repair it with parts. That's a great way of maintaining your weapon stock so 
prefer to remember that and repair with gun parts after you exhaust their durability. As for the shotguns, the shotguns are good, but like I said, they make just too much noise. I also find Winchesters, but ammo is so rare for them. They do a lot of damage, they don't do a lot of noise. So little, so little ammo for them. You can also have better sights, 6x. Six, six some other things, but let's not go that far away. Now, this is the real treat. As you can see, you have some AKs over here. You have the Mutants, the VSS, the BM, BAT MP9. Yeah, it's an MP9. It's much better than the MP5. The Glocks, which can have the full auto modification. You also find the Tavor SR. Basically, a very good assault rifle. Now, the problem is, again, they will be very worn, so collect all of the guns you can. I wouldn't necessarily disassemble them for parts either, I would just keep all of them. And sometimes you need to switch weapons and it doesn't matter, don't think about it. And this is the real fun one. Look at this, this beautiful beast, I'll show you how it fires in the last part of the video. 200. That should be only 100, but the developer said no, make it 200. And the funny thing is you can still modify it a little bit. Holographic sight. Yeah. Probably the best one of the best weapons in the game. There will be much better weapons. I don't want to spoil them, but you'll see what I mean by that. Definitely don't use them unless you have a good supply of ammo. And to be honest, ammo is not that hard to find, but use semi-autos. Never use a fully automatic in the beginning. Only start using I mean even if you have the CSS fully upgraded and the expert stuff and also the crit, crit hit and some of them, I wouldn't really use them. So I don't know, just be very very careful with your resources. Also, as you can see, I have a, you can find a lot of magazines for the 9mm stuff. You can also make explosive arrows, you can also have a lot of shotgun shells. 5.55 NATO seems to be the most common ammo type after 9mm. You can also find a lot of magazines for them. So that's basically my weapons. This is where I have all of my resources. We'll talk about them a little in a little bit. Vehicle repair kits. To repair your vehicle you need these things and you need two screwdrivers to repair a vehicle kit. So that means you'll basically need one vehicle kit the entire game. Which should be fun, right? And item repair kits, well, they're also pretty rare. I'm not sure if you can craft them. Remember, the game is still in a beta. Or an early access period and I'll... We'll see later. Here I just keep some clothes and some stuff I want to use and also explosives. You can make a lot of you can make a lot of cool things in the game. This is a handmade barrel bomb. And here is the medicine. Medicine is super super slow to get in the game, so most of the times you'll just heal by putting a bandage on your affected area. Furnace. And over here I have the item grinder and over here. Well, I guess you can put whatever you want, but this is basically all, all of the space you need. You can put a lot more things and you can organize yourself a lot better. You can put some gun shells over there. Now, that's the basic base building part of the game. I keep this next to my bed. It will also generate charcoal. Now, let's get to the more interesting aspect of the game, which is base building. Now, the base building has an interesting theme to it, because you will need stone axe and you'll need a stone axe and a stone hammer to begin with so you can unlock the workbench but to be honest you know what's the best way to farm in the game I should have probably started with this one get in your car and hit trees so yeah get in your car hit trees hit, pla hit plastic rubble hit fences in the parking lots because that will also give you a lot of resources and it will be super helpful, so the car can destroy everything and you can just use random cars to get a lot of wood and a lot of resources and after a while you can build even a well so having a base in this game is super important because it's a lot of item management and management in general 
Now, what about the other stuff you have to unlock? Well, I'll just show you how to unlock metal component. It will go very, very fast after a certain period. Medicine bench, ammo loader. You will also need to find and keep ammo to, to be able to craft them. 49mm bullets to be able to use them, refill the shells, and so on. Metal component for that. And these ones are not in the game just yet. Simple light, right? it's pretty easy to unlock. As you can see, it will be... Oh yeah, you need about 1 million rocks in the beginning, and I'm not joking. Just hit rocks with your car and you'll have a lot of rocks to unlock all of this stuff. Now, let's go over the basic things. You have the campfire and you will have to put a pot over the campfire. If you don't find the pot, uh, go to the supermarket. Supermarkets can be either unmarked or they can have that icon over there. Find one in the smaller supermarket in my little area of the game. Stone furnace, you saw how I unlock it. Definitely unlock this as soon as you can because you'll need to use your base a lot of times. You'll have the simple workbench and then you'll have the good workbench. Ammo loader, simple aid. Location marker, to mark your locations. This is how it looks, huge cabinet in the wilderness. Probably have to go and check that out. And over here we have construction. As you can see the water wall is super important, the storage boxes. You can build a base, you can build a fence, but normally the zombies don't attack your base. Normally the zombies spawn around your base but they'll never attack you at least not from what i saw i don't really recommend a locker but you can build a gun shop shelf if for example you want to put a shotgun over here and a pistol yeah and you'll have easy access to them and you can see them electricity not very useful in my opinion at least not to this point boring part of the game Now this is, well I guess I should show you the cooking first of all, it's kind of annoying and tedious in the beginning. Make sure you have enough wood. This will lag a little bit but don't worry. Sadly the game needs a lot of quality of life improvement but it will be okay. You can also hunt with the crossbow rats, crows, deer, bears, but you probably know bears by now. Make the look fire cool, so you don't use the matches. Now one thing, this bear meat is expired and it says it's inedible, right? Sadly in this stage of the game you don't really have a lot of penalties, even though the meat expires. You should be able to eat it. Going up on the fireplace. Hmm. People said you can cook the meat and it will be okay. Maybe I didn't cook it enough. Yeah, looks like it works. So apparently, even though it says expired, you can still eat it. So let's try that again, and this time we'll actually let it cook enough. No, I'm joking, you should normally be okay if you eat it, but I just wanted to show you what happens when you throw up. Quite an interesting animation, isn't it? Easy now. Well Hmm, still says inedible. Anyway, just play around with the system. Also, notice how it says we have hypothermia. Our body has low temperature just because of most of our weapons, most of the gear we are wearing is for, you know. Okay, fine, I'll give him a soda. Most of the gear we are wearing is for protection and that should be your main concern as well in the beginning. Hypothermia changes your health, your health super super fast. So I would stay near a fire when it says you have to do it like that. I'm down, we're not angry anymore. As you can see, it's very, very easy to start losing the game just because of a simple mistake or two. 
And in order to keep your health at max, you'll need to use a lot of regeneration. So that's why I have a few points extra in this one. And the other ones, I feel like they're not so important, at least not in the beginning. Definitely put more points into HP recovery so you can recover your HP while you're doing things. Now let's go over the base building and the crafting a little bit and you can see what will be important. Salpeter charcoal, super important to have these. I wouldn't make the copper and the iron tubes, you can just loot them or make zombies destroy stuff to get them. Nails are okay. Wood crossbow, wood hand crossbow. This is how I make the leather bag. You should collect all of the animal fur you came across. With fibers you can make the rope. Explosive, iron arrowhead. Yeah, this will be important, but sadly, you can only make one metal arrow at a time, even though you can make five iron arrowheads. And here is the barrel bombs. To be honest, I wouldn't waste the plastic bucket because the plastic buckets are very hard to find and I don't know. The game is not balanced, so I think if you want to make these, you should probably try to make the metal spikes. Or even... No, the lime one is too much. And then you can make the axes, the hammers and the pickaxes and the iron machete spot. Only the iron machete is good enough because the you will, you will harvest materials with your car. On the other hand, using the car will make a lot of noise which will join zombies, so you'll have to fight at some point. I like combustion one. It's not really worth it. This is not really worth it except for this one, but even that is kind of stretching it. And as you can see, the basic crafting is this. Fire torch, if you want to make the charcoal yourself. Fire tool. I recommend you make a lot of cloth, minimum dagger. And you can also refill ammo on the field, but I wouldn't recommend it. For 20 shells, you get 10 bullets, so it's not really worth it. Also, I used a lot of the filter drinking bottles, so this is what you're supposed to use in the beginning. Homemade cape, if in case you don't have one. Lifticle slugs. Again, I wouldn't use these crafting recipes for the ones you see over there, because it can be very annoying. To make them. At some point, you'll want to make the vehicle repair kits as well, but you need wrenches, tool hammers. I recommend you find them and then you repair them, you don't need a lot of them. Titan repair... But it's a little bit annoying because you need screwdrivers and if you use the screwdrivers on your item repair, you will not have enough for your car repair. So try to have a few on hand, but it's just better to have a lot more items and just switch them out until you can get a huge surplus of these items. Metal component, metal sheet, baseball bat, They're very easy to make. But probably you'll want to make the maze bats. And also have the katana over here, the G, the G. It's going to be very hard to make this one because you will need the glue. The glue is basically end game, early access stuff. I guess I I showed you the katana on as well. Probably it has similar stats to that. But it was very hard to use because it needs four grindstones. I guess I can craft those items and I'll show you later. If you don't have a crossbow, now is probably the time to make one. Cooking pot is also here in case you didn't find them one. The air bow is also here. The pressure tank you can make in the next in the next uh, crafting table. And the mechanical air bow is over here. Air bow? Mechanical air bow. I think we can upgrade our or airbow as well. I should probably do that at some point. Sometimes I'm just lazy. Six arrows. So yeah, probably I should make this one upgrade it. I guess I can show you right now. Let's do that. Mechanical component. What else do I need? Pressure tank and five nails, yeah. We'll do that in a bit. And you can also have handmade launchers. Basically it's a one shot gun, but I don't recommend them. They'll be super hard to maintain. And then all of your leathermans and the glue will get going to the firearm repair kits. Sadly, these ones do not repair. 
So that just used up. So you need a lot of Vedermans and the glue. And that's why it's hard to maintain the guns. And over here you can see how you reload them. This is how you make the shells themselves. So copper plate is su copper is super super useful. And then you just use the gunpowder. Sadly the amount of shells you use sometimes will be annoying. So depending on your preferred caliber. We don't have this one unlocked yet, but for example, one gunpowder and the 10 shells, you can refill it. And gunpowder is not that hard to make. So remember to always collect your shells, because with just saltpeter and a little bit of hard work, and you can get all of your bullets back. As for the 50 cal slugs, I'm not sure if they're worth it. You can get a gun. A pneumatic gun for that, but that will be also pretty hard to do and maintain. The pressure tank is over here, we only need three metal sheets. You can also make the screwdrivers, which is not so bad, but you'll be doing this in real time, so that's a lot of time wasted. I'll probably have to you make a lot of firearm kits and a lot of other stuff off camera. The red mines are over here with the screwdriver, so iron plate wood, screwdriver, mechanical component. Three, one per iron plate. So as you can see, the game can get super, super annoying with all of the things you have to manage and the guns, even though they're nice, I still recommend the crossbow. And you also have the alloy sheets. Now this is the part of the game that it really becomes interesting, the glue. Sulfuric acid, bone and water bottle. So you need to collect all of the water bottles you can, don't throw anything away, even the bones are important. To make the sulfuric acid, you need the sulfuric or Nitric acid is sulfuric again. It's going to be a lot of hard work. Be careful if the acid is on the ground, it will hurt you. This is the medical table. It's super, super important. Sugar is not used for anything for now. You can also make some super fun potions. Of course, the health potion will be the more important one. So, again, it comes back to scavenging in the woods. And that's why I prefer to be here on the edge as well. Here you can find all of the plants that, you're, that you need to play this stuff. I don't recommend you make it because it's going to be very very hard to make these things to prunella, to blueberry. They don't have a lot of shelf life so they'll be destroyed pretty quickly. Spring potion might be very very useful. Antitoxin might be useful if you get the spores. But even more important is that you need 10 mutant tissue and 1 mutant heart for a red dose, so don't use the crafting, as you can see, it kind of plays into the same thing. So only make some doses in the beginning. To make a red dose you need 30 mutant tissue and 2 mutant hearts. But from here you only need 10 tissues and 1 mutant heart, so that's huge, that's, that's going to reduce your farm time by such a long, by such a long time. So yeah, definitely try it like this. Well, you already know the well. It does exactly what it says it does, and it's so easy. Now, about the other mechanics, well... I guess I could have shown you how the generator works. Yeah, let me show you that. I think I needed some iron wire as well. And we also need... No, we need the advanced stuff. Mechanical components. So let's get all of the iron plates out. And this is where it gets tricky. It gets a little tricky because you will spend a lot of time doing this and some people might not like in... And look at this, this will be crazy if you do this so many times in order to maintain a firearm or maintain a melee weapon. So I just use whatever you like and if it gets really dangerous, use the best stuff. Don't the generator is only used. 
Make light. So let's do that. Now there are a lot of other things to say, but basically I think we covered everything and as you can see you can make everything as long as you have enough iron and enough time. Also a lot of food. And then you probably want to put this first. As you can see, you can probably put it a very, very long distance. Yeah, that's the max distance you can put it from the generator. I guess you can make it a nice parking lot over here. But probably you want to put it in your base. Warning, if you put it down, you'll not be able to move it, so once you put this down, it will stay here forever. See? You can only put stuff in it, but not move it again. And then you just put a street light. You need a light bulb, this one, that's how you collect it. And that's it, this is basically all of the things you need to know while playing the game and upgrading stuff and doing stuff. You might think, well it's not working. No, it's working. Electricity goes through the wires and over here we have light. Sounds fun, right? Yeah, except like I said, you will need to do so many things in order to have a lot of a lot of ammunition, you need to do so much with the metal crossbows, the metal arrows, and maybe you want some explosive arrows as well, you can also upgrade your airbow as you saw. And after that you can just do whatever you want, but I recommend you explore more of the map, loot all of the gun shops, visit the traders, maybe even visit the supermarket. The supermarket can have one of these resources, which I'm not sure what type of resource this is, but CNC component. It might become super super important later. <laughs> anyway, that's all for today. See you next time. Bye bye.